Welcome. The purpose of this brief video is to introduce students to using the West Topic and Key Number System, also known as the West Digest System, in print. In the next few minutes, I'll provide a basic review of what the Topic and Key Number System is, how it developed, and how West uses the Topic and Key Number System to organize and publish headnotes in print sets known as digests. So what is the Topic and Key Number System? Well, it's really just an indexing and abstracting system applied to case law. In the days before computers and databases, lawyers needed a way to search for relevant case law by subject or topic. About a hundred years ago, the West Company, the originators of West Law, set out to create such a system. The West team first set out to create an organized index of American law. They began by dividing the law into seven broad legal subjects or divisions. These mirror the courses that students take in their first year of law school. The West team then subdivided each of those main divisions or subjects into the legal topics that comprise each subject. Here are the 15 topics that comprise the subject of torts. The West team then set about to subdivide each of those topics into subtopics, which were then in turn subdivided down to individual points of law. The individual points of law are assigned unique numbers called key numbers. So, by way of example, under the digest system, Cases on the concept of duty or breach of duty in slip and fall cases are organized and collected under the topic of negligence at key number 1095. So at its core, the topic and key number system is really nothing more than an index or an outline, but that's only one part of the picture. Another part of the picture has to do with the editorial enhancements that West editors add to each case. Among those enhancements are headnotes. Let's take a look at the first few pages of a sample case to review West's editorial enhancements. Here are the first two pages of a case published in a West print reporter, here the Northeastern Regional Reporter. So the first thing you see is the West key, which marks the beginning of the case in print. After that are references to parallel citations, and then the official caption for the case. We'll come back to the rest of the stuff on these pages in a second. I know these are a little hard to read, but my point in showing this to you is that you can see the line that marks the beginning of the official published opinion and the end of West's editorial enhancements. If you go back and start from the beginning, everything that you see after the official caption of the case and up to the line are editorial enhancements added by West editors. So, to review, we have the editor's synopsis or summary of the case, then we have the headnotes for the case. The headnotes are summaries of important points of law throughout the case. Each of these headnotes has been assigned to the topic and key number outline. So, for example, we can see that headnote number three summarizes a point of law relating to the duty of a business owner to a customer who slips and falls. This headnote has been assigned to the topic of negligence, key number 1095. As we just learned, negligence, key number 1095, has to do with premises liability, specifically breach of duty in slip and fall cases. Just as an aside, because headnotes are editorial enhancements and are not part of the official case, one should never cite to or quote from a headnote. If the summary or headnote looks to be on point, you'll want to see the full treatment of the point of law in the case itself. To do this, you'll need the headnote number. Here, we are interested in headnote number three. Our next step is to locate where in the opinion the section that corresponds to headnote three occurs. So let's go take a look at the text of the opinion itself. So we're back to the official opinion itself. If you were to read this opinion from the beginning, you'd see that the first part of the opinion is a recitation of the material facts and procedural history. Then, the court's analysis of the issues begins after the line, this appeal followed. Beginning shortly thereafter, you'll see the editors have inserted notations where the analysis corresponding to the headnotes occurs. So, here's where you find the discussion that the editors indicate corresponds to headnote number three. It's important to read the whole case, but oftentimes a practitioner, having read the case synopsis, a headnote of interest, and the part of the case corresponding to that headnote, will decide that a case isn't relevant and move on. That's one way that editorial enhancements are helpful. They can be real time savers. So I've talked about how West organized the law into an outline known as the topic and key number system. We've also seen how West attorney editors summarize the points of law contained in each case and assign those summaries to the topics and key number system. Now let's take a look at how West marries the skeleton of the topic and key number outline and the meat of the summaries or headnotes into print publications known as digests. So what is a digest? West collects and publishes its headnotes, organized by topic and key number, into multi-volume publications organized alphabetically by topic. Each of these multi-volume publications is known as a digest. Digests exist for every jurisdiction. There are state digests, federal digests, and digests corresponding to many of West's regional reporters. There's even a digest that collects all the headnotes nationwide on a yearly basis. What about Illinois, I hear you ask? 
There is an Illinois specific digest, which is the main one you need to concern yourself with. It's called the Illinois Digest. It's now in its second printing, so its exact title is Illinois Digest Second. It's red. One of the advantages of using the Illinois Digest for case law research is that it includes headnotes from all cases interpreting Illinois law. So, in addition to Illinois appellate and Supreme Court cases, it includes all federal cases interpreting Illinois law as well. So that's it for this lesson. In the next video, I'll walk you through using the Illinois Digest to research case law when you've been given a good topic and key number, or at least one good case to start with. See you then.